seven and eight lessons from my French mother. You guys have been requesting this video for several months because I keep mentioning her here and there and how she has been a big influence in my femininity, but I have been putting it off simply because it is a very important video to me and I know she will be watching this and I want to do it justice. So today I'm going to give it a shot, try to do my best, and I hope that you all can learn something from it. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the channel, lovely feminine women. Thank you for being here. Thank you for liking the videos that you enjoy. Thank you for leaving me your comments. I love sitting down, going through all of them, replying to as many as I can reply to, and for following me on my other social media handles. I always say the same thing at each video, but it is important because if you are interested in any of the videos that I make on homemaking, femininity, living a more traditional lifestyle, I would love it if you would join the femininity revolution by hitting that lovely red subscribe button. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, today we're going to talk about lessons from my French mother, ma Mama Francaise. I get asked a lot about the major influences in my life when it comes to femininity or the influences to create this channel. And apart from my pageant experiences as a former Miss Earth Canada, as well as my faith as a more traditional Catholic woman, I cannot forget that one of the biggest pillars to my femininity is of course my mother. I have such a close relationship with my mother and many of you know that a few years ago she was diagnosed with mucosal melanoma which is a rare form of melanoma and it's been a struggle ever since but I am so grateful for all of your prayers as she is in a more stable state today. I am kind of a nerd when it comes to history and lineage. I've talked about my father's side of my family who has Dutch and German lineage because I am honestly a geek at finding out things about my family and simultaneously about those in my life, my friends, people that I meet. Tell me about your family. Leave me a comment down below honestly what you may have learned about femininity from your culture um, from your parents I would love to know it that is another reason why I thrived in my social connections when I did international pageants because I loved meeting women from all over the world and seeing how their flavor of femininity truly ignited based on where they were from so without further delay let's get into the first point of things that my French mother taught me about femininity and that is the realm of social interaction which um, kind of can be dissected into many different different parts. First off, the French, if you are francophone, if you have French family members or friends, you will know that they are very expressive. They will tell you how they feel and they are not shy from confrontation. This can be negative, but this can also be very positive because the feminine woman, like I addressed in my 2021 femininity goals video, is somebody who embraces their emotions. There's that concept of emotional control. So Expressing your emotions, of course you want to be able to decipher if it is an appropriate occasion to do so, but you want to have the freedom to do so as a feminine woman. What I mean by that is you don't want to live your life more in the masculine, which is goal oriented. You want to live in the process, which is very feminine, and the process of living that way is acknowledging how you feel every single day or how the interaction that you are having with somebody else is making you feel. Growing up in my household, it wasn't a thing to not let the other person know that you had a grievance with them or to tell them that you had a bad day. It wasn't something that we brushed off in my family and I was very thankful for that because it caused me to become more emotionally intelligent because I was able to actually embrace my emotions and that gave me more emotional control at the end of the day because I knew how I felt, I knew the similarities that perhaps I felt that same way in another situation. I was able to work through it by expressing my Myself, with my family members, with those who are closest to me, and I was better prepared for the future. So in your life, what you can probably learn from this is to let yourself that freedom to embrace your emotions and express yourself to those closest to you. We live in a culture where we're encouraged to just cut people off if we have a certain issue with them or if we have a dispute with them. And although I do believe that there are narcissistic people and there are toxic people that we do need to kind of flush in the trash or flush down the toilet. You understand what I'm saying. In the same vein, I do find that this sentiment is detrimental to many people because they don't learn the coping skills to actually get through those disputes. And for many of you, this is also going to translate to your most intimate relationship, to your marriage, to the uh, relationships that you have with, ch with your children. Because if you don't take the time to actually learn those coping skills, you're not going to be able to get through those hard times. And of course, there's a negative trope of the French person 
worse than being cynical. So I'm not advocating for that, but I am advocating for a healthy media. And it also kind of reminds me of feminine language when it comes to the tone of your voice. You can often tell a French person's emotion through the tone of their voice. In comparison to English, that's a little bit more difficult. So when embracing your femininity, you want to experiment with all those different kinds of flavors, all those kinds of different ranges that you can have with your voice. I've talked about how I have elevated my pitch within the past couple of years because I have embraced my true feminine voice, but I also have this flexibility in lowering my voice when I want to be taken more serious or when I am in a situation of confrontation. On that same note, as somebody who is also fluent in French, I'm not perfect, I have noticed that there is such a variety in the terminology that francophones use in their everyday vocabulary. And this has really inspired me to try to expand my vocabulary in English. So this doesn't mean that you have to embrace a totally new language in order to get that feminine flow in learning more voices and making your actual speech more flowery and more expressive. What you can actually do is consume content that is going to help you grow in that area because the feminine is very in tune with creativity like I've mentioned countless times on this channel and a big aspect of creativity is to be able to cultivate ambiance and a sort of feeling with your language, with the way that you communicate with other people. And a final note on that point is that you want to embrace body language. I have talked with my hands probably since the end of time, and I know this is very prevalent in certain Latin uh, cultures as well as Italian culture, and this is the same thing that you find in Francophone cultures. They are very expressive with their body language, so you have the tone of voice, you have the range in vocabulary, and then you have the body movements. So let yourself relax, open up, feel where your hands are going. Of course, you don't want to be too distracting and make huge movements like this, but when you're learning to be expressive, it's okay to make those mistakes, just like embracing your emotions. It's okay if you have a really bad day where you finally just like let it all out because you have bottled up your emotions for too long. That's of course not going to be the way you want to present yourself every day. You want to have a little bit more emotional resilience, but you're not going to be able to get to that place without practicing the skill. It's just like learning a sport. You know, you might fall on your bottom when you're learning to skate, but eventually you're going to get to the place where you want to be. So let's talk about beauty. I have a friend who is from Canada, but she has spent many years living in France. And one of the things that she told me that she truly embraced and that she absolutely adored about French culture, which is also something I learned from my mother, is that you have to focus on the foundational elements of beauty. So there's, again, the negative trope of the French woman who drinks too much wine and she smokes cigarettes. But there was somebody who did a study about why French women are able to remain trim and beautiful. And although some of them have those negative habits, they do focus on whole foods. The food in that culture is very much a big thing. And I believe that food is the biggest building block to health. We will talk a little bit about food later. Likewise, the foundation of beauty, which also goes along with what I preach all the time about sustainable beauty, is you want to put your most money and your most attention to your skincare, to the creams that you use. And French women are very into perfumes and the way that they smell as well. Because although another person cannot see the way that you smell, smell or smell the way that you smell unless you are in a close relationship with them, they invest in the way that they smell because it makes them feel more feminine. Same with skincare. You know, you might not be able to present yourself like the best Barbie doll, like men women embrace in North American culture. I live in Canada and I think it's the same for the United States. We have a lot of makeup. I mean, maybe I'm an oxymoron here, but I'm wearing a lot of makeup right now because I'm on camera. French women really tone this down and embrace more skincare and natural beauty. And that is what I try to embrace in my everyday when I'm not on camera. But I remember from a young age, my mom teaching me how to apply basic makeup and how to kind of have a check-in with yourself when perhaps you're feeling a little bit more hormonal and it's showing up on your skin or you're embracing a bad diet that is also showing up on your skin. And so how does this apply to your femininity? Of course we have 
what I mentioned previously, that it's going to help you feel better and more confident, but it's also going to carry you through the different seasons of life. So let's move on to dress. French women truly do embrace more minimalistic dressing. They are of course famous for their ballet flats, just carrying a simple tote bag. And most importantly, I always saw my mom wearing some sort of signature scarf and accessory for her. It was pearls and she was always wearing a scarf like I just mentioned. Why is this important for your or femininity because you want to pick things that are going to be easy to reach for your lifestyle that might not include what French women do but you have to figure that out for yourself I have embraced those kinds of stereotypes like wearing the ballet flats and you can often see me wearing a scarf um, when I go outside I usually don't leave the house without one and you all know I love my pearl earrings but this goes along with the concept of what I've been talking about when it comes to femininity in my past couple videos you have the right to to invent yourself, to brand yourself in any way that you want to brand yourself. So you have to think about what kind of feminine woman you want to be and reach for those things that are actually sustainable, that are actually easy, that are actually going to trigger your femininity and help you become the woman that you want to be in the long term. This goes along with what so many psychologists have talked about when it comes to habits. So French women make dressing a certain way, a certain archetype, a part of their habit. Of course, they're big in fashion, but they are more concerned about how they can remain classic forever. And I know there's this big push about being higher maintenance to be feminine. So I'm not advocating against that. But what I am telling you is that there is this really fine line. So you have to analyze, are you feeling decision fatigue by trying to incorporate too many things at one time? Or can you embrace more of a minimalistic feminine archetype to get the most success in your life? Another big section I want to talk about is the whole experience process of embracing French culture. My mom was very big into introducing new things into our lives, trying to make us more worldly people. And I do feel like the French have that down pat because they do embrace a slower lifestyle and embracing a slower lifestyle is going to get you to a more feminine state. It was a big deal for my mom to focus her entire day around the meal and around cooking new things and about embracing French tradition and preserving it through foods. And that's why you have this stereotype of French people actually taking many hours in the day to sit down and have a meal. And in comparison to North American culture, that seems like a waste. But if you're trying to live a slower paced lifestyle, which will help activate your femininity, you want to try to cut things out of your life and make those experiences the center of your day. That's also why I do believe that French people like to explore new wines because it's all about the experience of trying something new as well as cheeses, as well as a variety of meat dishes. They also like to set the table nice, create ambiance, play some music. These are all things that are going to help you tap into your femininity. And I do think that if you do this at your home, your family is going to have a better occasion to bond and you might have more romantic time with your husband, which is always a plus. Which reminds me, if you actually do work outside of the home, tailoring your day towards looking forward to that meal at the end of the day could also bring you to that space. Something I noticed my mother also doing is that since she was big on worldly experiences and kind of introducing different things into our lives, which embraced her culture, she always had some form of art that was specific to French culture. She also liked to put out fresh flowers often. That's not something that is specific to French culture, but she tried to cultivate that kind of like chic home that transported us to a new place when we walked through the door. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is self care. So we talked about French women being able to embrace experience when it comes to their beauty and slowing down in their lifestyle. But a big factor specific to my mother that I learned from her growing up was that she embraced the French parenting style. I'm not going to get into what the French parenting style is in this video, but it is funny because when I stumbled upon it being trendy a couple of years ago and I listened to a few videos, you can just do a YouTube search and I think there's a book on it. I was laughing because I was really my mother. She honestly parented the French way. This doesn't mean that she was she wasn't neglectful in any way. She just knew how to balance her own identity with being a mother. And I am not a mother yet, but I learned from her the importance of putting up boundaries, about not being ashamed to tell those people in your life that you need time to take care of yourself or you need to do something to take care of yourself or you need to make a change to be able to better 
better flourish your femininity. And I think that boundaries are critical when it comes to embracing your femininity because as a feminine woman, and when you tap more into feminine energy, you will find that people are trying to take things from you because the feminine energy is very vulnerable. So they might take more of your energy. They might want to take more of your time, of your generosity. And those are beautiful things to give away. And I am fully about embracing that Christian spirit of giving. However, I have begun being more selective with who I give that energy to. I've learned over the years that not all friendships are created equally. And I've also learned the importance of putting my husband first. That's something that my mom always told me throughout our lives as children. She talked about the importance of her relationship with my dad and how that was of paramount importance before anything else. And I do think that this lays the foundation for a good marriage. So I want you to reevaluate your life and who is truly deserving of your attention. This does not mean that you shouldn't give yourself and expect something in return. What this means is that I want you to analyze your relationships and see which ones are truly benefiting you, your soul, your spirit, who you are as a feminine woman, and those that are kind of um, weighing you down, that are draining you. I could talk on and on about this subject, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I would love it if you would leave me a comment down below. Let me know about how your culture, your parents, um, perhaps the country that you live in, what those customs have taught you about femininity or anything else that you have to add to the conversation. I love you all, lovely feminine women, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.